Faith Alive is on the air with Evangelist America. Ted Shuttlesworth. America shall be saved from New York City to Honolulu, from the Arctic Circle to the Rio Grande Valley. America shall be saved. From Ted Revivals in America's urban centers to major venues all over the world, Brother Shuttlesworth touches millions of lives daily with his message of faith, proclaiming the saving and healing power of Jesus Christ. With over 40 years of dynamic preaching, he is bringing this life-changing gospel into your home. Join with Ted Shuttlesworth and let's believe God for your breakthrough today. And now, join us in Elizabeth City, North Carolina, with the crowds that came to hear and be healed. Evangelist Ted Shuttlesworth. Hello, everyone, and welcome to the telecast again today. I'm Ted Shuttlesworth. You're watching Faith Alive. This is our ministry by television, almost 20 years now, all around the world. Uh, Brother Eric Smith, our media buyer, told me the other day we're on in over 200 nations of the world. That's amazing to me. Now, listen, we're here for you. I don't know what you have need of, what you're believing God for, but stay tuned today. What you're about to see and hear is the Word of God in action. And the people that you see receiving miracles, these are real people receiving real miracles from a real God. Now, you'll see a toll-free number on your screen. If you need prayer, our anointed prayer partners are standing by right now to pray with you overseas, a special number. Now go with me into a live service where the power of God is moving and God is going to do something good for you. And now with today's message, you're going to make it. Mark chapter four, verse 35. And the same day, everybody say the same day. Amen. And the same day here, how many believe it'll be the same day right here as well where we're at? Amen. And the same day, something's going to happen. What? When the even was come, he, Jesus, said unto them, let us pass over unto the other side. And when they had sent away the multitude, they took him, that's Jesus, even as he was in the ship. There were also with him other little ships. And there arose a great storm of wind, and the waves beat into the ship so that it was now full. And he, Jesus, was in the hinder part of the ship, asleep on a pillow. And they awake him and said unto him, Master, carest thou not that we perish? And he arose and rebuked the wind and said unto the sea, Peace, be still. What happened? And the wind ceased and there was a great calm. And he said unto them, why are you so fearful? How is it that you have, now notice this, no faith? When you get in fear, it'll cancel out all of your faith. 
I heard a preacher say, fear, he said, this will help you remember it, is false evidence appearing real. Everybody say, false evidence appearing real. In one of our recent meetings, a pastor from Pennsylvania came who had two huge tumors in his stomach. He was sitting behind Brother Hess, Sister Diana, that was in camp meeting. In severe pain, they told him it was probably cancer. While my son and this anointed band that plays and sings praises God, while they were playing, Bishop told me, he said, fire started working in my stomach. He said, I felt like I was on fire, Brother Shuttlesworth. But he said, I lifted my hands. He said, I knew those two tumors. He said, both were the size of grapefruits. And he said, I just made up my mind. I don't care if they burn and hurt. I'm going to praise God. Not realizing the burning was God blowing those tumors up. He went back home to Pennsylvania. When he went in for his checkup, the doctor came out and said, I got some news for you. And Bishop told me, he said, I was ready for even the worst news. Doctor said, I can't find those two tumors in your stomach anymore. Bishop said, what? He said, he said I don't know where they went. Here's the one x-ray. Here's the other x-ray. And you can see the one I took today shows both of those huge growths are gone. He got on the phone and he called me right then. He said, Brother Shuttlesworth, I just got some great news. I said, what is it, Bishop? He said, I came to camp meeting. And I was sitting in the service. And your son Teddy and the musicians were worshiping God and praising God. And he said, I felt something burning in my stomach. And he said, I thought it was these two tumors. I said, I didn't know you had uh, these tumors. He said, oh, yeah. But he said, the burning turned out not to be the tumors. But it was the power of God that came in my body in that service while people were praising God. The devil knows your praise is powerful. Are you listening to me? Turn to your neighbor and say, I'm going to the other side. Amen. Whatever you're dealing with right now, God's going to bring you to the other side of victory. Whatever you're facing right now, your God who is God all by himself is going to bring you to a place that the devil's trying to keep you from making it. But I come to tell you, you're going to make it. Somebody shout, I'm going to make it. Shout, I'm going to make it. When Jesus said, let us pass over to the other side, he gave them a word that turned that storm into a means of convenience. Are you hearing me? They're still going. Let the storms come. Let the winds blow. Let the waters rage in your life. I come under this tent tonight to tell you, you're going to make it in the mighty name of Jesus. I don't care what the report is. I don't care if it's a bad report. I'm telling you, it's false evidence appearing real but the word of God is truth thy word is truth hallelujah and if Jesus said it he's got to do it if he spoke it he will bring it to pass in your life shout hallelujah shout I'm gonna make it let us pass over to the other side Wave your hand to heaven and say, here I come, Lord. Amen. I'm not talking about dying. I'm saying you're going to make it. Are you listening to me? I'm telling you, you're going to make it. The Lord has a plan for your life. He said, I know the plans I have for you, plans to bless you, plans to prosper you, not to harm you, but to give you a hope and to give you a future. I want you to get this in your spirit. I'm going to the other side in the name of Jesus. I'm not by myself, but Jesus is with me. He's in the boat with me. With me, the wind may be blowing, the waves may be raging, but Jesus Christ, who represents the spirit of peace and rest, is with you. And if he's with you, you're going to make it. Oh, hallelujah. I said hallelujah. Woo! 
And I've preached this before last year, this one segment. But I didn't feel like I got to finish the message last year, so I brought it back this year. Summer reruns have come early. Hear me. The Bible says when Jesus stepped up, he rebuked the wind, but he spoke to the sea, peace, be still. Do you ever wonder why I did that? Now, the word rebuked in Mark 4 is the same word rebuked in Mark 9. And it means taking authority over a devil. In Mark 9, a father came to Jesus and said, I brought my disciple under your, or your, my son under your disciples. But they could not cast this devil out. And Jesus, seeing the crowd run together, rebuked the foul spirit. And the devil came out of that child. That word rebuked in Mark 9 is the same word in Mark 4. He rebuked the wind, which means the devil was in the wind. He was trying to bring a storm against God's children. But he spoke to the sea. Why didn't he rebuke the sea? The Bible says it's God that made the seas. And he didn't rebuke his father's creation. He just spoke to it. Peace, be still. What was the first miracle of Jesus? John 2. He turned water into wine. And God brought the working of miracles onto planet earth through the use of water and turned it into wine. What was the first attack that the devil brought against Christ? It was the storm and the water. The thing that was the miracle in John 2 became Satan's strategy in Mark 4. And the devil is a little copycat. He said, I'm going to use the water and take out the master. But what he didn't realize was that when Jesus spoke, wind and waves have to obey him. The devil is a false uh, hope for people in this sense. They say, well, I might as well just live any old way I want. What difference does it make? But the child of God that has learned, if you take a stand for Christ and say, I'm going to make it, then I'm telling you every storm will stop, every attack will go Thank God deliverance is in the name of Jesus. Come on, clap your hands and shout hallelujah. Shout, I'm free. Shout, I'm going to make it. Say it again. I'm going to make it. God is pouring out his spirit right now on planet earth. Souls are hanging in the balance. Ladies and gentlemen, Jesus wants to use you today. I've been preaching Christ's saving and healing power through television in great outdoor meetings where miracles are taking place. We send out free gospel publications to multiply thousands, and our feeding program is touching people here at home and overseas as well. When you partner with me, I'm going to pray for you every single day, and I want to encourage you to become a soul-winning partner with me. There are three ways that you can give. You see the information there on your screen. Prayerfully consider becoming a soul winning partner today. And when I hear from you, I will lay my hands upon your requests, your needs, and pray. Together, we're going to make a difference. Go with us into a live service where miracles are taking place. I feel like there's some young men and women only you know how old, old, young, and old is. God's calling you to preach. You're under the tent right now. I feel it. There's a young man right now you're thinking about, should I do this job or should I do what I feel God calling me to do? How many under this tent tonight, you feel like God has something for you to do? You don't know exactly what it is but it's like a calling in your spirit. You that have your hand raised, quick, get out of the auditorium. Come up on this ramp with me. Some of you are here at the altar, a few. Move right quick. I feel like God is separating a generation to preach. 
Here they come. Here they come. Just come on, I don't know. On Tuesday, you at the altar, lift your hands. Come over here, son. Come on. Come on, young lady. Until that day, God calls. Come on, just feel right across. But until then, Donnie, let them form two lines if they have to. How many are glad God's calling a new generation? Until then, bring the second line right down across the front. That's it. Lead the way. Until the day my eyes behold his city. Until the day. Turn and face me. You that are down there, you can fill in. There's still a little more rope. Until then, sing it, son. My eyes, learn it. Behold that city. But until then, my heart will carry on until the day my eyes behold God's city until that day God calls me home this week quite a few of our staff and us we've been fasting and praying pushing our plates aside for whatever reason, tonight, this man told me the other night, he said, I came from Los Angeles. I'm here. But he also feels there's something he's supposed to be doing. I felt it on you when God touched you the other night. And every one of you on this ramp, and right behind you, look, here's a beautiful wall of faith of people. They're believing God's going to use you. You say, but I'm young. It's okay. I used to be young. I preached my first message when I was 14. Can you believe that? Abraham Lincoln was president. No, I'm just kidding. Years ago. That night, nine people got saved. High school guys. I'm in junior high. Five of them got called to preach and left and went to Bible schools all over America. I'm still in junior high school. When they'd come home at Christmas, they say, you're our spiritual daddy. I said, what? You're all older than me. Scott George, Daryl Lewick, they went up to North Central. Randy Dean, Southwestern. Jeff Lehman, Roger Young, went to Zion Bible Institute. I'm still in junior high school. They're learning about Jesus. What if I hadn't yielded my life that night? The youth pastor came. I was sitting like this, girls. I sit and he said, you're supposed to preach tonight. I said, say what? I opened my Bible quick. Turned to Matthew, the ninth chapter. A verse seemed to leap off the pages simply said the harvest is plenteous pray everybody say pray pray to the Lord pray ye therefore King James you and I if we are saying pray unto the Lord that he will send forth laborers into his harvest you know what I got in front of me laborers I'm glad you came. God can use all the hair, gray hair, and no hair. Because there's nothing too hard for God. I didn't know I was going to do this. But the anointing just came in me and on me. And I felt like God said, if you'll give this call, I'm going to separate a whole new generation of men and women to preach the gospel. I will lay my hands on you first. 
The same things you see God doing under this tent night after night, don't be surprised if it starts working in your life. I wrote a book. I don't know where they put it. Where did that book on the gifts of the Spirit go? Thank you. After 40-some years of preaching, God said there's going to be a new generation of preachers come. He said, I want you to put the secrets of how I use you with Scripture in a book. And he said, then, when they get it, I prayed over these books when they came from the factory, like a prayer cloth. He said, when they begin to do it, then they'll demonstrate. So I didn't know. Last September, not even been a year, I had them print it. The first thousand was gone in a month. Then the next thousand, and another thousand. And all of a sudden, I found out there's a generation that wants to be used in miracles, healing, deliverance, declare the word of God. And then I felt better that I obeyed God. I even gave it an unusual title. The camels are coming. During COVID, factories, they say, we can't print it right away. One day my office called. I was on the road preaching. They said, the camels are here. Do we have any back at the table? I want to encourage you. If you want to be used of God, begin to build a library of faith. Let God use you. Now, I'm not in a hurry. Tuesday night, tomorrow night's halfway point. Can you believe that? Now, how many of you have been receiving in these meetings? And all I know is the Lord told me. He said, I want you tonight. With, tonight's Tuesday, right? When you preach every day, they all seem like Sunday. The Lord said to me, I want you. Is there any way you can bring Thomas up here? You need to be up here, Thomas. I'm going to show this to the world. Because the world says the church is dead. Nobody goes to church anymore. Young people aren't interested. They don't want Christ. But catch a glimpse of this, Thomas. This on the ramp, folks. These that are on the ramp, they're just the ones that feel the call of God. And by scores and numbers, if you multiply it around the world, you couldn't count it. For the Holy Spirit is still calling people. And I believe the Spirit puts you on this ramp. I don't know what you're going to do, but I'm going to confess over you. It's going to be big. It's going to be great. Man, if I go down, you preach. I feel the anointing. Everybody lift your hand one more time. I want Brother Hess to come up with me. Brother Rice is here. Brother Nemeth, come up on this platform. I'm going to put these men of God to work with me tonight. I want my wife to come, Deanna. Thank you, Lord. Every hand lifted all over this tent. This is what we used to call a consecration service. When the Spirit says, who will commit themselves to me? That's me, Lord. I'll do it. I'll do it. I said, I'll do it. Every hand lifted. Hallelujah. I know a song that my son does know. It simply says, if you can use anything, you can use me. Before we pray, let's sing it a couple of times. You can use anything, Lord. You can use me. If you can use anything, Lord, you can use me. And touch my head and my feet. Touch my heart, Lord, speak through me. If you can, you use, can use anything, Lord, you can use if you need healing tonight, you need a touch. Get ready. If you, you can use anything, Lord, you can use You can use me. If you can use anything, Lord, you can, you use, can me. use me. Isn't that wonderful? Touch my hands and my feet. Touch my heart, Lord, speak through me. If you can use anything, Use me. That's beautiful, son. Sing it again. 
I'm holding in my hands the prayer request that you all are sending in. You see there on your screen how to get your prayer request in right now. And our office staff, they print these out. They bring them up. We put them on this altar here in the TV studio. I want to hear from you today. Let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, while the faith of the people is high, let the anointing of Jesus Christ by the Holy Spirit come into every heart, every life, I come against sin and the power of sin. If you're not serving the Lord, pray this right now. Say, Dear Jesus, come into my heart. Forgive me of my sins. I believe you raised him from the dead just for me. Thank you, Father. Amen. All sickness and disease is under the feet of Jesus today as well. Be healed, be made whole, be set free. Listen, I um, <clears throat> have just finished a great crusade under the big tent in Atlanta, Georgia, and we're headed to Buffalo, New York. And I need your prayers, and we also need your help. I can only take the gospel around the world because of you that are our friends and partners, and your gift today literally helps us to bring the gospel again next week by this network or TV station, however you're viewing the telecast. Would you sit down today and consider giving a special gift? You see there on the screen the different ways you can give. And I can't wait to hear from you. I appreciate you so much. And remember, because of your help, souls are coming to Christ. And you stand right by my side when I'm on those platforms. Now, this is Brother Shuttlesworth reminding you until next week, God is very close to you. Evangelist Ted Shuttlesworth and the entire crusade team would like to invite you to join us for our upcoming crusades. Join Brother Shuttlesworth July 8th in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania at Revival Today Church. The church is located at 2419 State Avenue. July 23rd through the 28th, join Brother Shuttlesworth under the tent in Buffalo, New York. The tent will be at the JFK Recreation Center located at 114 Hickory Street. Registration begins nightly at 6. Services at 7. August 13th through the 18th, join Brother Shuttlesworth under the tent in Parkersburg, West Virginia. The tent will be at Parkersburg City Park, located at 1920 Park Avenue. Registration begins nightly at 6. Services at 7. Thank you for tuning in to Faith Alive. We would like to hear from you. Visit us online at tedshuttlesworth.com. You can also write Ted Shuttlesworth, P.O. Box 7, Farmington, West Virginia, 26571. Or call toll-free 1-888-323-2484. That's toll-free 1-888-323-2484.